Good evening and welcome to the Highgate Select Board meeting June 1st, 2023. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming. Does anyone have any public comment that is not on the agenda? Okay. So, Luke, we'll start with you. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. So you have a town plan update for us. Yes. So you want to give us the yeah, sure. Give us the highlights. Give us the highlights. Okay, so the town planning commission has been working on an update for feels like a, at least a year now. <laughs> Uh, we've gone through, we've updated a bunch of information, statistics, uh, population, stuff like that. Uh, so basically, our town plan will expire on July 23rd of this year. Uh, the plan updates uh, focuses on updating the data information, adding a new implementation table, and incorporating the work of the BCRD, Highgate Community Visit, and Economic development initiatives plan. The plan update does make two minor alteration, alterations. The designation of land area in Highgate. The proposed land use map has been altered to add two overlay districts. The airport overlay district was added, the airport overlay district to the future land use map and the purpose of limiting the height structures of in the immediate vicinity of the airport and to allow modifications to dimensional standards that support the airport related commercial and industrial uses. The floodplain overlay district added an overlay to the future land use map based on the 100 year floodplain as mapped by FEMA. The purpose of the floodplain overlay is to restrict and regulate the development of floodplains in order to prevent loss of life and property by flooding. These changes will most likely be minimal impact on surrounding areas. These districts were already identified in the text of previous plans and the existing development regulations. The only change this plan makes is adding these areas to the future land use map. Uh, these changes are not expected to lead to major changes just the overall pattern of compact development in the village and open space elsewhere, or have any significant impact on traffic. These changes will affect long-term benefit on the municipality by limiting development in areas where such development could result in high cost for maintenance of infrastructure and public safety. And in the case of the airport overlay district, support appropriate development for an airport area that may expand the town's tax base. After considering all the alternative locations, uses, and impacts of other areas similarly des designated, it has been determined that the areas under consideration are suitable for the proposed land use design designation. The size and boundaries of the proposed changes are appropriate for the proposed land use land capabilities and existing development in the area. Uh, the town plan includes 11 chapters, two appendices, uh, introduction of visions for future of Highgate, social and economic resources, natural and cultural resource energies, transportation, community facilities and services, all hazard re resiliencies, Land use, neighboring communities in the region, recommendations for implementing the plan, uh, Appendix A, enhanced energy maps, and Appendix B, Highgate Housing Needs Assessments. These chapters are consistent with the 14 goals established in Chapter 17, Section 402. These goals aim to maintain the historic settlement pattern of a compact village 
Separated by rural countryside, provide a strong and diverse economy with rewarding job opportunities, broadening access to educational vocational training opportunities for people of all ages, provide for a safe, convenient, economic, and energy efficient transportation system, identify, protect, and preserve important natural and historic resources, maintain and improve air quality, water, wildlife, and land resources, encourage the efficient use of energy and development of renewable energy resource, resources, maintain and, ex and enhance the recreational opportunity, encourage and strengthen agricultural and forest industries, provide a wise, efficient use of natural resources, ensure the availability of safe and affordable housing, plan for, finance, and provide an efficient system for public facilities and services, and to assure the availability of safe and affordable child care. The chapters also contain all 12 elements of the municipality plan established in Title 24. Highgate's development regulations are based on information compiled and the goals expressed within the town plan. The Highgate Planning Commission members have spent many hours, I can vouch for that, discussing and planning this document and would sincerely re like to receive your feedback. Like we said in the past, our meetings are always open to the public. Thank and, you. Thank you. And this plan is also available on the website um, and available here in the office, so people should take a look at it. We'll have another hearing on July 20th, uh, at what, it, which time we will adopt if there are no further changes. So everyone take a good look and see what the, the future of Highgate may look like. If we have some questions, we can bring them to you, Luke. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for Luke? Just a quick <coughs> one on the airport. The limit of the height is it because they possibly was put in a, a tower? Uh, I think it has to do more with the buildings surrounding the airport, especially the Right, like runway approach. Flight uh, path. Yeah, flight path. So, so if, like, if they decide to further expand and build a, a tower for a, that's allowable because it's under FAA. Yeah, control. I don't know yeah. if we'd have any. So yeah, you'll mind that. Mind that. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering where the height is. Basically, more landing patterns, make sure there ain't no buildings that are. It's got to be a well, they, they won't be disappearing after the first flight. They won't. There's got to be an <laughs> obstacle, obstacle free zone. <laughs> for, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's, it's sloped to like a 40 to 1 ratio. There can't be anything in that plane. So the airplanes can come in and not hit anything. Because I think it's last year before they took all those trees down, they did have an airplane come in on the approach and clip some trees. Because the trees had grown too tall. They grown into that plane yeah, where they weren't supposed to be. Will eventually the business across the road be uh, uh, bothersome for the airport? Which businesses? The uh, tractor business. No, that's way below that. That's okay. way to one plane. As it goes out from the airport, it gets higher. Considerably higher, so no. Okay, okay. Just, just curious. No, yeah, won't be back. Yeah, and that's listed in people's deeds as well. With that approach, and it's all part of an easement. Okay. All right. Thank you, Luke, again. Thank you, Luke. All right. Corey Lane. We have some residents back and Mr. Pocket. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, um, just as a little introduction, the last time we met with the select board was April 20th. And at that time, a uh, number of Residents from Quarry Lane uh, related to the select board, their desire to have the road taken over by the town, and they told all the things that they were 
were commissions. They thought it should be taken over. And then the select board came back with a list of concerns about it, which again we uh, looked at and tried to respond. And we put out this document, the Quarry Lane Appeal Response, which I think most of the people in the room have had a copy of and hopefully a chance to read, study, all the things. So it, we tried to address the concerns of not only the select board, but Tyler Billingsley, a road engineer for, from East Engineering, as I recall correctly. And um, we've tried to uh, put together our uh, feelings about things. Um, because the concerns were so large in, in number and somewhat technical in, in uh, addressing, we put together a bargaining committee of three people, uh, Roger St. Cyr, he's a property owner, plus he works for a paving company, uh, Pete Kett, who uh, is a developer of Quarry Lane, but um, also uh, the uh, owner of Quarry Road, and he's willing to give it to the town, by the way. And he, he also personally uh, entered into the construction of the road himself, so parts of it he knows quite well in terms of what he's done. Then myself, Michael Kravitz, I'm the homeowner also, and I, I'm a member of the Development Review Board. I'm happy to see where he's here tonight. So, uh, at any rate, uh, the first thing the committee did was that they wanted to uh, know the last house that, uh, or the last road that was accepted by the town. And that turned out to be a Thrack Boulevard uh, off of Medicaid Road. So we wanted to uh, use that as a model to understand what the board uh, required in a new road and taking over the road. So we, we uh, came down, I came down to the town hall to look at the, the uh, folder on the road and understand what the documents were, what the town wanted, and what, what was necessary. And one of the things was, that was surprising to me was the idea that uh, there was no detailed analysis of Front Boulevard by a, a road engineer. So I was surprised to see that, and I thought, that, well, uh, okay, it means that we won't have this complete information to be able to compare Quarry Road to Front Boulevard, which has been accepted by the town late. 2022, as I recall. So we took that information, plus the information on the A76 standard for roads, plus the specifications in the town uh, copy. Uh, this thing. Uh, town acceptance for the road. So uh, they also contain Mr. Billingsley's uh, annotated comments uh, that we wanted to look for also. So in, in going into Throck Boulevard, one of the first things we noted was that uh, there, there, when two roads intersect, there's a curve on either side. It's about a 30-foot curve that uh, gives the approach to the road. And that, that was not 30 feet. We were very surprised at seeing that. Uh, so that, that's uh, listed in the A66 standard for a road. The next thing we, we were amazed, a little surprised about was that if you went to the cul-de-sac at the end of the street, uh, what, you, what you did is you came from a 22-foot road into a 15-foot road. And most cul-de-sacs are paved. And this, this one has trees and it has brush and things. So the road's only 15 feet, so you're going from 22 feet to 15 feet. And again, one of the things that's in the A76 standard for a cul-de-sac is that uh, it's a semicircle, so therefore it has a dynamic, diameter. So therefore, uh, 
you can measure the diameter, and in the specification for A76, the diameter is 70 feet, and the diameter of the cul-de-sac at that boulevard is only 30 feet. So that's it's quite, quite a, a bit of a come down on things. Uh, Mr. Billings, we also pointed out that uh, in, in Quarry Lane there were no headers on the culverts, so there's no headers on the culverts over Thrack Boulevard either, from what we can see. And, and finally, we came down to the one that uh, is reasonably important for everyone, and that's the width of, of Quarry Lane. And uh, Mr. Billingsley pointed out that, uh, twice actually, that he found a spot that was less than the 22 feet that was necessary. And uh, in Throck Boulevard, we found three places where uh, the road was less than 22 feet. Uh, one was 19.6 feet, the other was 20.0, and the third was the cul-de-sac, which was only 15 feet. Quarry Lane, on the other hand, has a, an approach when it intersects Ford Road that's greater than the 30 feet that's necessary. It has a uh, cul-de-sac at the end that's fully paved, and the, uh, the diameter of the semicircle is 90 feet, not, uh, not 70, so we're 20 feet to the good which a lot of, by the way, a tractor trailer to go around the cul-de-sac and not have to back up, which was quite a feat there. So um, from our point of view, the, the next thing, the committee uh, went down the road and took measurements at the boundary pins of each home. And in doing that, we put it into a chart that I told People blame that anyway, but you follow this chart a little bit. It is on page four. Now, is this on Thack or Quarry? Uh, Quarry Lane. Okay. We did not measure Thack at all. Okay. Yeah, for, because I'm so going to tell you that this hearing's for Quarry Lane. Yes, yes. So let's. Well, we're just comparing. We're just comparing. Okay. That's, that's fine, but we are talking we're gonna about stay Quarry Lane. Lane. We're going to stay on Quarry Lane. No question. So, as you, as you do most roads, there's some parts of it that are going to be a little bit short. There's going to be some parts going to be a little bit over. So you, you justify it in taking an average. And the average for quarry lane is 22.2 feet. Okay. So in, in summary, therefore, uh, quarry lane has, has an entrance that's uh, within the road specifications of the town. Uh, from the A76 standard. It has a cul-de-sac that's within the specifications of A76, so it meets the A76 road standard. It meets the standards of the town in the sense that uh, Mr. Packhead has indicated that he will put uh, headers on the culverts on Quarry Lane, so that will be straightened out. And as far as the width of the road, it's about the same as what we see on track four. What's the what's the width of the right of way? Pardon? What's the width of the right of way? Sixty feet. Sixty feet. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, any any other questions? Since because I'm about ready to go on to another section. Okay. I, I've got a quick question then. Um, do we have any information or any documentation on what was done to that road before it was top coated? Yes. You, you, you have all of the documentation on what was done? Because from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, from what I understand, that road was widened to meet yes. that standard. Yes. And we've got the documentation mm -hmm. of what was put underneath it that depends, road. Depends on what you mean by we. There, the, the, the town there is a cross section of the road that I submitted in this report, okay. which, yep. like a yay. Okay. During the, remember, the road was constructed over a 28 year period. Okay. There were representatives of the town, which, for one, that visited on occasion, mm -hmm. and they said that the, the uh, 
construction was acceptable. We have that information that they said it was. Yes. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure we got all, all everything's all correct. I just want to make sure we got all the information we need. Right. Okay. That's the idea. Okay. So since you're talking about the road, then we can go to this. I hope everyone's seen the cross section. All right. So the photo was taken in 2022 when the existing 15-inch culvert was replaced with a larger 18-inch culvert required by the A76 standard. The location of the culvert is close to the Raymond property, which is about the exact middle of the road. The following layers can be seen from the bottom. The original topsoil was removed, so you had the sand layer, that's the orange layer, 12 inches plus of gravel were installed in two 6-inch lifts, and the black layer, was finished with two inches plus of number two driveway mix that's in the white layer. The number two driveway mix is a kind of a finer gravel than, than what we use for the uh, 12 inch layer. And it was followed by two inches of asphalt paving, which is also the white layer. The road laid uh, dormant for about a year, and then an additional inch of asphalt was put on uh, before uh, the road came up to A76 standard. So over the period of the last five years, we observed fire trucks, garbage trucks, building supply trucks, school buses, ambulances, tractor trailers, delivery trucks, dump trucks use quarry land without seeing any dips, holes, or other damage to the road. This suggests that quarry land is on a very solid base of sand and gravel and is likely to be saved for at least the next 10 years. Okay. And, and and that question I brought right away again, if this gets accepted, does that mean the town gets 60 feet of deeded right away? Right. Okay. So people on that road up and they're standing from the center, the 30 feet out is theirs to use, but it's not theirs. No. No, it'll be a, the town will own the, the 60 feet. Yeah, okay, at this point, you're just, yeah. we don't always need that width. But. And their pins are actually 60 feet or okay. 30 feet from the center. Okay, very good. Any other questions? Okay, so that's the underpinning of the road. All right, uh, uh, there, there were a number of other things that Mr. Billingsley uh, brought up that have to do with culverts and uh, swales and uh, the intersection, whatever, which uh, are, are covered in this response, but I won't go into it here unless the, the board or someone else has questions about it one way or the other. If you don't, then we'll go into stormwater, which is one of the other big ones that's here. So, okay, so for the stormwater permits, um, we consulted the state standard stormwater, ge stormwater general permit number 3-9050, which is about 108 pages, which I know everybody wants me to read to the top. Oh, that's right there. I, I would read it, except I didn't spray my throat this morning, so I won't be able to. So. <laughs> I'm glad you have it, Jack. I'm glad you have it. Okay. So I think the, the germane part of it is the fact that uh, a permit is needed if the total impervious surface was three or more acres, okay. So an impervious surface as defined by the standard is a surface in which rainwater will roll off and not be absorbed into the uh, surface itself. So um, that's what they uh, require. Uh, So again, we got our measuring. So, so, so what we're talking about here for an impervious surface is the road, the cul-de-sac, the driveways, the walkways, and the roofs. Okay. And uh, we got out our tape measures and we measured every house, driveway, walkways. We didn't go on the roof. We didn't think that was possible. So the total. Uh, acreage for the house was 0.33 acres. The road, which we took from the invoice for paving for the distances, was a total of 0.68 acres. 
So the grand total of everything was 101 acres, uh, which is uh, less than the three acres required to trigger a storm water permit. Now, Mr. Cat had records and other documents where when he was laying out Quarry Lane, uh, the engineers used approximations and theoretical ones because nothing's built yet. You have to do estimates on it. And based on that, he came up with a number of 1.25 acres. So you would expect that because he's measuring the, the road, the cul-de-sac, uh, the uh, driveways, walkways, and the roof. Where in our case, we didn't want a roof and just measured the, everything but the roof. So it's a higher number. It's about one third of what's required to spur a, uh, a stormwater permit, according to what I've seen in it. Maybe Sharon. So in 2017, that went to one acre of impervious services. And in 2022, or yes, 22. It's enacted that starting uh, 2024, that that goes to a half an acre that triggers a stormwater permit. Oh, this is new yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Um, and I would say that I would agree that it did not originally need a stormwater permit. That's absolutely true. Um, But now, as the state gets further and further into the stormwater issues, if the town takes over Quarry Lane, it becomes part of our stormwater inventory of roads. And our roads all have to be up to the newest standards. It's part of the way they get us to comply because they hold our grant funding hostage for them. So we have to do so much stormwater improvement on our roads every year in order to hit our goal in order to keep our funding so quarry lane wasn't required to have a stormwater permit by mr Plaquette, but it does have a stormwater issue with the town because that will now be our responsibility to have the upkeep and the newest standards all be enforced to the town okay we went out and measured, and we had a calculated one, so uh, we know where we stand on that. So um, all in all, uh, we find Quarry Lane to be of suitable construction and size that would be a superior road for the town of Highgate to own and maintain. And there's one other note that I'd like to leave you with, and that is that uh, people like to see the town of Highgate grow. One way the town can grow is to acquire another road. And it's a it's a win-win situation because the town grows a little by acquiring the road, and the taxpayers and homeowners on the town on the road feel that the town cares about them and they feel closer to the town. So we feel it's a win-win situation to uh, have the town take over the road. Thank you for the time. I'll sit down. Unless there's questions. Okay, so in the September 2021 minutes of the Development Review Board, there is on the fourth page of those minutes at the top says that we cannot know if the town will ever take over the road. There are other roads also hopeful to become town roads and our crew and equipment are already at capacity on many levels. We can't predict the future, and that is a process with the select board. So we we did have hearing that in 21, we were also suggested that the town might not take over the road. Nobody said it was a sure thing, but. Right. Um, the other thing I would question is that as part of these minutes, um, there was supposed to be a where is it here? Uh, and the fine about 
quarter of the way down and in the fine print pointing to the number two for ingress, egress, and maintenance of Quarry Lane, see the Quarry Lane Road Agreement. All lot owners within the subdivision are subject to this agreement. The land within the road right of way is currently owned by James Pocket and eventually could be conveyed to the lot owners with the subdivision in the town of Heggie. Um, Mike, uh, I'm not sure if that's you, Michael, or if that's uh, our zoning administrator, um, ask for more insight as to what that means. Um, Pete said he's willing to give in, give it to the town or the lot owners, not sell, give. Most of the lot owners are not even aware of the road agreement. Many of those that signed it no longer live there, so it's hard to say if it, this is a functioning agreement. Um, so that's also something uh, here. It says there's no functioning association, so there's no association to hand the road over to, and the town may not take it over. Uh, the deeds are not specific, and nothing in Mike's deeds, so I'm assuming that's yours. It speaks about the association or a road maintenance agreement. We talked about this a little bit before really need to have an agreement on that road for all of your sakes. Legal. Yes, indeed, indeed. You. That's why we're here and that's why the neighbors and Right, but that's not the town's responsibility in any way, shape, or form. Well, we, we want to know what the town's requirements are and, and uh, if, if it's possible, we'll comply with them, obviously. Well, whether the town does or doesn't take over the road, you should have a legal right to the road. You should have a legal access to your property. Um, and you want to make sure of that in writing. Um, and that's just for your own protection. Um, I agree 100%. I won't beat this to death, but does the board have any other questions or concerns? Yeah. Who presently owns the road? I do. Yeah, people. Okay. Yeah. They all have access. Yeah. To the Is that in writing? Yes. So there is a homeowners. It's not a homeowners association. It's just a right. A, 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 a road agreement. Actually, there was a copy of that. Well, I actually have them right here. There's a Quarry Lane Road Agreement, and there's a Quarry Lane Road Association. Now, has that ever been recorded in the town? Yes. Yes. Okay. And with, as far as Mike's case, why it wasn't in his deed, the prior owner, his signature's on here, he was on the agreement. But apparently, either Mike's attorney or his attorney didn't state that, so it yes. didn't end up in Mike's it's in Rogers and it's in all the others, but it just didn't end up in Mike's, which was the, the attorney's responsibility. Right, because I know when we talked at the last meeting, there were only three residents on that agreement. Oh no, everybody, I had it. Okay. I just have a copy of it. And uh, I think it was uh, the select board and my decision to, to, to get the engineer to look at that because in the past we didn't do that and as he said Steve Poof and I went down and looked at it well that's all right that we look at it but we didn't design it we didn't build it we just looked at it and, you know maybe maybe Steve okayed it but I knew this is where the town is headed uh, and I thought at the last meeting that the engineer that designed it was supposed to look at it to compare the notes of Tyler Billings. Because I don't think you can just throw out all of Tyler's findings. There's some in there that we can live with. Yes. We, we didn't say we're no. throwing them out. We just well, 
you know, he, don't sound like he was too rough at all times. No, it's not that at all. Yeah. He, he had concerns about the road right, that's... from a technical aspect. Right. We took those concerns and we tried to see if indeed that's a model road for us. So uh, what, what it is, where are we and where are we not? And, and uh, okay, so we did some more measurements and we did some other things, but, but it, it, it's also clear that uh, I think the, the road uh, is certainly uh, as good as uh, Rock Boulevard and I think superior in some cases. But, I mean, it's only, it's only a half, it's only a quarter of a mile in length, you know, it's a small road. Yeah, know? that's, I'm it's, not arguing you, that's why the select board and myself decided that an engineer, you know, not, not the select board members can okay it, or myself, it's, it's written in there somewhere, Sharon, I think you, uh, the one, I knew this was coming to this, anyway, so that's why the town, it's not the town's responsibility to, Every time something is done, to go check it, it right. was Pete's obligation to document it as it came along. So the paperwork is all done. You, you wouldn't be there, in. There were times that Pete invited people down. There were times that you were out. Yeah, I'm so I'm saying, But like I say, I, I don't. You know, the town is not responsible until it's taken over. That's all I have to say. Well, every, everybody needs to understand what's going on with the road. Yeah, so the homeowners and the select board certainly. So that's that's why we're here. Right. Trying to find out where, what we need to do in order to get things so everybody's happy. And Michael, that was was my question before. I think that Butch brought up was as far as you you said that Pete was there and he saw it happen. And we just want to make sure everything is documented and it falls into place so that um, when the one inch and mistake me, uh, help me if, if I'm wrong. You said one inch of uh, top coat went on that afterwards? After. Yes. 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 And a year after. And the outside of the road, you said, was anything done to the edges, Pete? Oh, before yes. that was put on? Yeah. Oh, yes. And you've got yeah. all that documented, too? Yes. Okay. We have, and, and we that, have pictures. We, we haven't submitted that one yet, but uh, we, we have pictures on that. And that's what my question was. Do we have everything documented? That, was asked to be able to bring it up to A76 standard. So that way, because we can all go by hearsay. Yeah, I was there, I saw it, I did. Well, the first time we lay a truck over, well, I saw it, but you know what I'm saying? I just want to make sure that everything is documented and in place. You've had a lot of trucks go over. A lot of I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know how many trucks. So that's why, as a, from a town, well, I want to make sure that we've got at least everything in writing. So. Well, we've done the best we can to dig up the documents. And I think you guys have done a great job. I really do. And, you know, again, if there's other okay. other requirements or concerns, we'll try to fulfill them as yep. best we can. Uh, as you saw, I don't know if this, where go, this gentleman, he saw me, I went out there one day and I was doing some measure, just looking around, seeing, <clears throat> I'm one of those, I gotta put my eyes on it. I wanna see what it looks like. I wanna see what, it, it looks great. I just wanna see that it looks absolutely great. That's so, why we feel that. And if you look at the underpinning and the pictures from the underpinning, then, then you see that clearly uh, it, it's, a, it's a quite, quite, quite a nice road. Well, it sounds like, like at this point, all you need is a couple of headers and certain columns. Yeah. To satisfy me. By the road, about 30, 30 foot. Uh, yeah. That's the only place it's okay. wide. But to satisfy the engineer. Yeah. To the rest of the uh, questions on that road. We, we didn't put captions on those pictures, but if you have questions or want to know where it is, yeah. then we can help you with it. So they, it couldn't have been that long these were taken, or how long ago was this taken? Because there's there's leaves on the trees here. They were uh, they were taken as the progress. Which is when? Because I, I so I'm looking at these pictures. I don't see a date or anything. No, I don't have the date. I do have the dates at home. Like okay, okay. I just I'm looking at the green band. I just am trying to put together when it was. It, it took it took 26 years to bring the road up to A76 standards. So uh, there, there's some documents that are hard to find. There's some documents that we dig up here and there. So okay. well, people remember. The first time it was paved was only paved 20 foot wide because it wasn't. We didn't have to meet the A76 standard. 
And then when I came through for the last subdivision, uh, we had to go with the A76 standard, so we had to widen the road two feet. Actually, I put in four feet of stone because we had to put in uh, a foot of stone on each side. The blacktop had to be 22 feet, and there had to be a foot of stone on each side. Uh, and prior to that, I had, uh, on the cul-de-sac, I did the same thing as Spack Boulevard. I left the trees, not the trees, but the inside was grass. Uh, it didn't seem to work out. So I took all of the dirt out of the, the inside, uh, down to the same measurements as the rest of the road, and filled it all in with stone, and then paved the whole thing. Okay. So that's probably some of the pictures you're seeing in there, too. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I would suggest that we um, table this for now and um, come to a consensus and provide them with a letter um, stating our decision. Do you want a motion to table it? I would do that. I'll get it. Okay. So the RV usually gives 45 days. So we would ask for the same. Um, we'll provide you each with a letter and go from there. Thank you all for coming. You have done an excellent job of research. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And it's. Uh, we live here too, so we that kind of it's make it a better town. Yeah. We believe it is a very nice neighborhood. Thank you. you know, it's, it has nice people, nice neighborhood. It, it is definitely an asset to the town. Thank you. Thank you. I think there is anybody that wants you to look at it, check it out. Yep. Feel free. Just curious, Pete, when did you start that development? What year? Uh, 95, I believe. It was 28 years. Yeah, thank, you. thank 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 you. So while we're talking about roads and public works, let's here. Butch, the truck committee has a recommendation on the purchase of a truck. Do you want to explain it? I can if you want. You, but yeah, you look better. <laughs> I'll leave half of it out. So the truck committee looked at three uh, brands of trucks, a Western Star from RR Charlie Boys, a Mack from what used to be Sheldon Trucks, which is now Trains Eastern, Trains Eastern, well, Trains Eastern Mac, oh no, Trains Eastern Truck Centers in Wilson, and an International from Allegiance. Uh, which used to be Clark Truck Center. Uh, we immediately uh, rid ourselves of the Mac quote because they could not provide us with a date for a truck. So that immediately got rid of that pile. We went through the Western Star International uh, bids, warranties, and um, decided that uh, we would recommend the uh, purchase of a Western Star from our, our child boys. Um, they gave us the best uh, trading value and they gave us um, a fairly firm conviction that that trade value would stay regardless of the time it would need to get a new truck in. 
they give you a time frame? Did they give us a time uh, when the truck would be ready? Yes, yeah. it will be the first quarter of next year. Oh, so they were able to give us a date, which is oh, good. If yeah. we give this back to them ASAP. Okay. June 2024. Perfect. Okay. They will not have it this plow season. Yeah. They will have it about 24 bucks. I think it goes, if they can manufacture it the first quarter, then it goes to the equipment, uh, like the equipment, uh, then it would be nice to have it by next fall. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll have you here to try it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, so can I have a motion to purchase a 2025 Western Star in the amount of 100? Hold on, folks. I wouldn't say a price. Okay. That price will change because it will be based on when the okay. truck is built. So that is okay. an estimate only. Okay. All right, and uh, to have Viking be our equipment. Uh, Spec company that puts our box and cylinders and whatever else on we need plows. We've dealt with them for a budget. Yes, we have. And, 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 now. and, and you're, you're happy with yes. this? Okay. It's That's right, all right. Around, right here in Wellington, so. Okay. I just want to make sure that the parts are ready right available. Perfect. I'll make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 And then, did they need to make a motion on the warranty information as well, correct? Is that what Sandy was saying earlier this week? Yes. So, yes. Did, I don't know if you've seen that information, but we did bring it to Butch and I listened in, and it's an 84 month um, warranty, which is really good. It sounds pricey, but I mean, 84 months is pretty much the length we have the truck. Is that the same we all have this one that we saw in the night? Yes. Oh, okay. Is that the same thing? Okay. So, he the truck meeting, so he probably needs to do it. Oh, yeah. And it includes the towing. The only thing we mixed out of the last truck's warranty package was the towing, and quickly realized that maybe we shouldn't have one trip pretty much cost what that warranty price covers. The that's biggest cheap. thing on that's there is it includes the that's emissions. Cheap. That's cheap. Yeah. That's cheap. Yes. The emissions can cost ten to fourteen thousand. Right. One problem with that. That's right. That's, that's why that's cheap. And of course, today's vehicle is so computerized that mm -hmm. you text to be able to get money. Absolutely. So, I totally agree. Right. So we make a motion on the full warranty. I'll make that motion. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I will forward to um, Sandy and I will copy your public works email. Okay. Okay, what else can we do for you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We posted his job. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's a bummer. Well, maybe he'll come part time for us. <laughs> When he gets bored sitting at home, that's why he wants to kill me. When he was here too long. Well, I think that's all I Okay. I've got it. All right. Then we will move right on to Shane. Okay. Sharon's got the check warrant in front of her. Okay. All right, does everyone have a chance to look at the check warrant? Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to sign? I'll okay. make a motion. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, while you're signing, we are in June, which is crazy. So yeah. I will start ramping up, getting ready for the auditors, closing out the fiscal year, and starting a new one. It's crazy. I sent my last delinquent tax um, nasty grams out in the mail. And we are down to a total of $63,338.94. And awesome. it could be better, but it is not bad. Um, most of the people on the list are on a payment plan with me already. It's just gonna take some time. Um, but the ones that are not, please call me. 
because um, we will start the tax sale process all over once again. Especially um, when there's still money out there. Yes. There's money available to help you. The program ends June 12th. And I also sent a special letter out to everyone on this list, encouraging them to apply, all of them. Just apply. You don't know if you're denied if you don't apply. Um, one last thing, uh, Franklin community member slash bus driver of the Dan children came to see me uh, earlier this week and had some comments about the Memorial Day parade starting too early. That was very rushed for everyone that was in that parade to get to Highgate in time for noon. So I don't know how many years it's been at noon. I know it was at one and then it was at 1230 and now it's at noon. I don't know if the fire department felt that time work better for their barbecue or worse. No, I think it was us. I okay. think it was a committee and, I, and it was, it was with the, um, for the uh, color guard getting the swamp. I, I know there was, that was one of the reasons we, uh, backed it up because they were having trouble there weren't time enough here to, to, for them to do what they had to do here and then go to swamp well, i know i suggested to ty i've already mentioned this to ty who's on the memorial yep. for, uh, committee that maybe the three towns need to get together with the band instructor mm -hmm. and figure it out yeah <laughs> They probably should get together anyway, right? Just to figure out everything. So, yeah. that. so they thought maybe the twelve thirty is doable, but that noon was really, really tight. Said I would pass the message, so that's what I'm doing. Okay. And right now, that's all I have for you. Okay. Well, I know that since we're on Memorial Day, I know that uh, the flower raffle made sixty eight dollars. Yes. Uh, the winners were Louie and Bior and uh, Kelly Uzel. Um, the bake sale made roughly $300. Yes. Um, didn't have as many donations this year, but it was a good turnout for, mm -hmm. for what we had. Um, and then how did the cow clock go? The cow clock went very well, I think. Um, who won? Oh, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to hear that, Richard. Who won? <laughs> Kevin Flynn won. <laughs> really? Who won there? Was it his cow? <laughs> no, it was no. It was all in the family there. <laughs> so, um, I, I thought it went very well. It took about two hours. We started at two and it, it finished about four o'clock. A couple hours for the pool, um, but I mean, there was people came and went and watched it, and, and uh, I, I think our our profit was about a thousand dollars. Yeah, they didn't sell all the tickets, but uh, a majority. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's cool. So I think it went well mm -hmm. yeah. for the first time. Mm -hmm. and, the only uh, time, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made her a little feisty. We've got some buttoning up to do, but I think Denise Paradis was excellent, and maybe next year my suggestion would be let her handle all of the tickets. Yeah. I also would say since we're on Memorial Day that her wreaths she handmade were very nice. Yes, oh, they, they came okay. out very nice. Also, want to thank you, Sharon, for announcing all the floats and people in the parade. Could you hear me? Yeah, oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Um, then the best bicycle was your grandson. Best decorated bicycle. I think it was me. Gregory Sutton. There you go. And then the best float was. Um, Dunn's. Yep. Carl Dunn. Okay. Yeah. Maple Fields. Okay, yeah, Maple Fields. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm so used yeah. to that. <laughs> So yeah, so that uh, was uh, was very nice. Mm -hmm. People were good turnout uh, for the hot weather. The yeah. firemen did sell out of chickens. They had about forty or fifty chickens left. Mm. 
Um, but it was dang good. Yeah. It, it was, was good. good. Yeah. 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 Jack heard it came out really nice. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, and they had lots of help. I was so I'm always so impressed how many people come out. You know, the wives and girlfriends all came out. So they did a bang up job. Yeah, very good. That's it for my morning all day. Lisa Hango gave the speech. Did a nice job. And Senator Brock was here as well, just for a kind of a meet and greet around. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else, Shelly? That's it for me. Thank all right. you. Anything else for Shelly? Any other questions? Okay. Um, what do you um, Yep, you have minutes from May 18th. Okay. Is I everyone... wasn't here, but I watched the movie. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Wendy was taking care of Bobby. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was doing my best. Um, does everyone have a chance to read them? Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion to sign? Make a motion to sign. Do have a second? All second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> um, I mentioned it a minute ago, but um, Butch's position is posted. Um, it was in the Courier today, and it will be in next week, and then it's going to run in the Messenger starting tomorrow. We put it in almost all the same places as the town administrator position. Um, we did not do the colleges. We didn't do the colleges. That's, it's it's not on Indeed yet. On okay. Facebook. It's on Facebook, Instagram, the website, it's around town. I sent it to surrounding towns. Um, yeah, so it's out there. Um, open until filled is the way it's listed. So um, it looks like um, applications and resumes are going to go to Shelly, and I guess when she gets a little file, you'll have to form a committee and we'll do this all over again. So, this is the plan, Butch. If we can't find anyone really good, you can't leave. <laughs> is that a motion? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Shouldn't be hard to replace No. I no, Butch. don't think that's true at all. Put yourself sure sure off, then. Mm -hmm. You've done a great job. Is your wife uh, retiring also? Next year. Next year, okay. So we got a little more Adana and Kids. We do. Okay. Head start. All right. <laughs> That's what you think. She's got a list for you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it in the woods. <laughs> um, Shelly, I had made a note on my thing here personnel policy updates. Oh. We need to add the benefits, and then there was another yeah. question. Yes. The librarian is wondering about Juneteenth, that it's a federally recognized holiday, but it's brand new. It's not in our policy yet. So what is the select board's decision on Juneteenth? She asked if we had it off, and I guess at this point it would be a vacation day if we decided to take it off. She said other libraries in the area are observing it, so she just asked. So I said we would ask. Uh, any idea what BLT sees? I think um, once it was federally recognized, most places have added it to their policy. We don't tend to change our holidays and our policy unless we're making other amendments already. So it just hasn't been added, amended. So I leave it to the board, whatever you think. Who observes it now? State and Fed? Yeah. I know the bank. Post office, something like that. Okay. So it's totally your call that came up, so we said we would ask. I said we observe what the other towns are doing. I mean, whatever the other towns are doing, yeah, I mean. Well, I know last year, 
We, did, we didn't observe and we were asked why we were open. And we're like, well, it hasn't been had it. We can't just take days off because we want to. <laughs> but I thought I did take a vacation because Camp Johnson was already Because your husband is off. Mine would never be, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> Too many cows. Yeah. Too many cows. So. Richard? Are the schools still in session? No, no. it's no. June 19th. Yeah, so yeah. The school still in session. The well, kids are out. Kids kids just out. barely. The kids are already out. There's There's like, I don't know. Richford will go to the 20th. Oh, okay. Because okay. it's still a like snow day. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Does it always fall on June 19th? Yes. yes. That's the day? Yes. Okay. June 15th. Yeah, okay. okay. So I would assume it would be just like Veterans Day, where it's always on the 11th. And if it's a Saturday, it's like there's no. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that's I, my feeling is we would allow it to be observed. And, so. I totally agree. I, I, I agree. observe it. Yeah. Richard? Yeah. Okay. Make a motion. I'll make, make a motion. Okay. Right. <laughs> Mary, 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 make a motion. I'll make a motion to oh, yeah. allow that as an approved oh, yeah. holiday. Okay, so, so it'll be added to the policy. Uh, I'll, I'll along second. With the, at the newly Benefits, but along with the short term disability and right. life insurance yes. to the benefits. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, the only other thing I have is a, and you can talk about it now, or it looks like you're going to be talking about it later. Oh, we yes. This is the we're moving on. We have to okay. hold on. Oh, hey, sorry. That's the second time you've caught her. I know. I'm all wobbly today. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mary made the motion, and I seconded it. Yeah. Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, you are going to be talking about discussion of the wastewater system land purchase vote, July twentieth. We also have a warning associated with that so we can do that all at the same time if you want. Okay, so has everyone seen the warning? Yes. Okay. So the warning is the legal holders of the town of Highgate are hereby warned and notified to meet at the Highgate Sports Arena in said Highgate on Thursday, July 20th, 2023 at 6 p.m. to vote from the floor on the following article of business. Article 1. Shall the voters of the Town of Highgate approve the purchase and sale agreement entered into by the Town Select Board at its meeting of May 1st, 2023 of 18.5 acres from WRB LLC, which was formerly Roger Wright, in the amount of 300,000 for the purpose of creating a village wastewater system. Said purchase to be fully funded through a clean water state revolving fund uh, grant in the amount of 200000 and through the American Rescue Plan Act, which is our ARPA, grant in the amount of 100000 Copies of these purchase and sale agreements will be available at the special meeting, are available upon request from the town clerk, and may be found on the town's website. Uh, adopted, approved at a meeting of the select board of the town of Heidi. Duly called, noticed, and held on June 1st, 2023. Received the record and record in the re records of the town of Highgate on June 1st, 2023. Do I have a motion to sign? Make that motion. Second. Have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 So I have one here if you want to sign this one, Sharon. Oh, okay. Where can you grab this, please? Thank you. So please. Ask questions, stop a select board member, visit them, say, hey, what's this about? In order to develop the property that used to be Meishi property, the village core, we need to have a wastewater system. That means basically a giant leach field. It does not need a treatment plant, nothing fancy, just a big leach field. And it's main purpose is to help the development of that piece of property. Um, because the wells and um, sewers of their surrounding property to that property are so close, we don't have a good source, uh, a good space to put a septic system of its own there. So 
the answer to that question would be a wastewater system. So we have grant funds um, in the amount of $2 million to go forward with the construction of that. But this is the first piece, and that's buying the property. Richard, would you like to say anything on that topic? Um, uh, the only thing I could add, I can commend the board for having continued with the uh, uh, negotiations with the rights. Unfortunately, I had to deal with Roger at one time. He was so sick that it was difficult. But anyway, we continued, and uh, I think it's the right step. It, uh, taxpayers will not be affected by this. It will enhance them eventually, and it's a no-brainer. Go for it. Is the land already passed? Yes, the land's been tested, yep. and it's it's very preferable according to the engineers, yep. and um, they would prefer it to be there. Um, and it allows for expansion. So this is basically a phase one, and could lead to a phase two um, in the future. But one step at a time. We'll be far enough away from the airport that it won't affect uh, the height. It'll be over here on land. Yeah. No, 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 the main street property. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, the only one way in. Yeah. So a little piece that we can go up. Well, we're going to put up just a 10 story building. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, to answer the question though, on July, July 20th, come yeah. because there is a vote uh, <coughs> there are plans already designed by the engineers of different options and some of them are pretty cool they have a lot of good ideas a lot of things that the town suggested that they'd like to know you know have around uh, there's commercial in there there's a new library in there and some of the designs have housing as well for the elderly. I think there's That's five. Really, there's five yeah. different plans. They're on the website too. Yeah. And it's uh, sad to see that a lot of the, the talk before now there's nothing much ever said for the elderly. That is absolutely it's, true. I mean, and, and our population in Huggy is aging quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And those that would like to stay in a small community often can't because they're either priced out of their homes by taxes or, or just expenses. Um, this would be an avenue where they could stay here and be close to family and friends. But if this wastewater is not loaded in, you might as well turn it into a park because it's not doable. Absolutely. This is your first step to be able to open up and utilize that piece of property to its full benefits. Yeah. So, so I mean, if, if the town votes to buy it, we buy it, the rights still need to go through a subdivision process? I don't think they've done that yet. Correct. Um, they are in the process. My understanding is they're in the process of doing that now separating that piece of property from their Act 250 permit that yep. they're already in. Yeah, so they'll have to go through a process with the DRB. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and they uh, want to keep the road, which there was some discussion, but the town would have a legal okay. right away at all times. And as far as any info session, that will happen at our next meeting? Yes. Um, because be that, cause we only have one meeting in July. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yes, any questions, call us, stop by, ask somebody. The July meeting was the vote. And this okay. vote's gonna be at the arena. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what the warning yes. says? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we want to make sure we're not packed like sardines in this room. Correct. Okay. Followed by a regular select board meeting yes. at the arena. And you, I noticed a note you adjusted the time with Heidi. Yeah, she did a flyer up for this vote, but I haven't posted it because the time isn't right. So the time will be 
6 o'clock for the vote, and it's a floor vote because we vote public questions from the floor. So you got to be there to vote. Well, that's a good point because I have already been asked, well, how come the polls aren't open from 7 to 7? Yep. We've tried this and you keep saying no. <laughs> so, you got to be there. You can't vote by Zoom. That's not legal. So you got to be there. Yes, sir? Can we do absentee? Huh? Can we do absentee? No. That's only from, the, that from the floor. From the floor. Right. So the my, my question is, is six too early? Should we go seven? So we're considering we still got a few farmers, and I I think we ought to go seven. If you're having a regular meeting after, you know, I and, and I was going to bring that up too. I think I don't think we need a regular meeting after. I, I think that's going to be There's enough. There's town business that needs to happen from June to July. Well, I mean, is there a different time? I just think it could, our meeting, we're hoping it goes quick, but usually when we get in a meeting like that and a vote like that, we're, there's a lot of questions and a lot of talking, and I just think, do we do it on another night, our, our regular business meeting, and do that, save that? I, I just think, it, I think we're putting a lot. I think know. there's already a few regular business things, like your third town plan hearing is already mm -hmm. advertised for July 20th at the regular meeting, so we have to change a few things. So I don't know what the answer is. No, I, I don't know. It just seems like something that we should try, I think, 7 o'clock brings, you know, you know, there's still people getting home at six o'clock, and so do you think we have an hour's worth of discussion? Do you think that actually the town vote probably wouldn't be until seven anyway because people will want to talk about it first? It's a good chance. Yeah, I, I don't think it's just. I think there's a lot of people that are going to have. We're going to do it before, but I think there's still going people going to have questions at that floor meeting. I think. I mean, beyond. Well, if you then if you leave it at six, and we figure people will have a variety of questions that may end up at seven anyway, then we wouldn't have to change the time. We just, if uh, if necessary, we'll have to stretch out the, the questions or answers a little to get further to yeah. seven o'clock. Because we're only advertising what time the meeting's starting. We're not saying what time the vote is. Correct. And that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Right. You are giving the time, but however long that discussion is gonna take is whatever it's gonna take. Because you right. just signed a warning that says we're doing it at six. So if we're not, that needs to be fixed. Right. I think they need to leave it alone. Okay. Right. But just because it's all been put out there with other right. meetings and other connections. But I understand your I see your point concern you. too, but so what, I don't know, it's hard with these four meetings because right. one size does not fit all ever. You're right. Yeah, that's where all our ballot does come in. That's for handy for people that work and could vote absentee or pop in at noon instead of having to be there at 6 p.m. Yeah, it's hard. There's definitely some pros. I know there's a lot of people that don't want change and they like that town floor vote, but there's some struggles <coughs> to the Australian ballot Or at least an absentee. I agree. Or at least an absentee, because I'm like, I'm like being in state. Uh, right. Which you can do when it's a ballot, because it's right. a paper vote. Right. right. That's right. So that means I can't vote. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's cool. It sure is. Yep. <laughs> it sure is. We've tried this, what, how many times have we? It's actually a table. If you wanted to add that to your special meeting, there you, go. you could untable it then. <laughs> so anyway, okay. do you then, want to leave then, it? Then we have to go to seven. Then you actually have a crowd. So if we leave it at six, we could very well still be talking about this at seven. Mm -hmm. We don't exactly. know. Yeah. We don't know. And then we're going to have a regular select board meeting after. Whatever that may be. So bring a lunch. Supper. No. I can arrange that. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> Mary has connections. Um, okay. So we'll leave it at six. Because I gotta let Phil the 
people do know. He's our yes. moderator. He doesn't yes. even know about this yet. Oh boy, I haven't told him. But hopefully, he can come. Yeah, right. If not, you could appoint somebody else. But hopefully, he'll be around. He doesn't said I haven't said anything to him yet because nothing was signed. Right. Gotcha. So okay. So next meeting, June fifteenth, will be an info session, and then the, the whole floor meeting is going to be another info session leading up to the <coughs> Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. I guess that's it for me. So for select board, um, one thing I have is I am concerned about the loss of business entail. Uh, Cheryl Pospethoff is leaving, so that's one good that business that like? we're leaving, that we're losing. That's because she's retired, right? Sorry. Yes, her husband has yep. health problems. Um, the other one to consider is um, Kelly Uzel told me at the parade that they had one more year of resources and that they were going to be um, cel celebrating their customers at the next Memorial Day parade and they were hoping to sell it, but if it doesn't sell, there's another case of that's going to be rough on the town because there are a lot of people who go to the store. And uh, Ms. Wilk Mrs. Wilkins is trying to sell it as a veterinary service. I spoke to her husband a couple weeks ago, and they didn't have anybody that was interested because they said there's more money in Burlington and Shelburne than there is here. Yeah, I don't doubt that. So that's why. Exactly. Not, that's going to have a trickle down effect. There sure. goes our clinic. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Less vaccinated yeah. animals, yeah. people having yeah. a harder time getting their animals vaccinated, so it's going to have a ripple effect for sure. But I don't know whether the town could ever help out with something like that. There, you have a point. We have done it with certain businesses quite a bit in the past, giving them tax breaks Incentivize it. to be able to get to another uh, company, another right. person in. Didn't they sign some kind of a policy about? First. We did, yeah, two, well, no, because of COVID, wait a minute. Like yeah, the last time we were on the floor, years ago, four yeah. this year, what was that? That was, was a tax break on the municipal so the food truck? tax. Nope, it was for new incoming businesses. Yeah. And the first five years, I want to say. Right. Or you were just on the website, go to the policies, I'm pretty sure it's there. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it might behoove the town to, even if we send out feeler letters to say uh, UVM or, or BTC or say, hey, you don't happen to know, you know, a student that might consider, you know, maybe the Wilkins would be willing to, to give a little and if the town helped a little and maybe there's some grants out there available for I mean, because honestly, she brings in a lot of business. She does. Whoever walks in there is going to have a whole customer. Right. And I think part of the reason that they can make more money in Burlington than they can in Heidi is because uh, Cheryl's been awful decent about her pricing and about making sure people know what's what. I mean, she's very honest. She's She's going to tell you if mm -hmm. this won't work. Mm -hmm. No. She has very good staff. Yes. Very good staff too. Yeah. So maybe. But then she's again, done such beautiful things to that building. Yes. Yeah. 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 Bring it up to her. Yeah. UVM. They, the town is willing to work with you. Help out if a new veterinary right. wants to come in. They're excellent. Excellent members. You know, and uh, the same goes for. Desorces as we move along, we need to have a food serve, some kind of food stability oh, in the town. The problem with that building, yeah, and I, I see it every day with right. what I do for work, 
is somebody new going in there is going to have to spend a lot of money to update it to right. FPA food yeah. standards. That's the issue right now. He's right. grandfathered. Right. So he's safe, but anybody new going there is going to have to totally yeah. revamp it. And that's which, extra fund that. Right. Which may be a good place in that community core for a grocery store right. or a butcher or something that's already updated and available for somebody to, you know, not that I would ever want to interfere with David's business, but he's, out. He's, a, he's a key member of this community and his business is an extreme key. And, you know, we want more businesses in town, we don't want to lose them. So I'm just throwing that out there for ideas that maybe we need to, to consider. Um, seeing how the, the way things are. Anything else for selecting? I, I do have um, Shana again from Trailer Park. So, did, did you, you get a chance to talk to her? Did you see the letter I sent her? No, I did not. She okay. did or, respond. Yeah, I did respond to her. Okay, good told her that we were unable to help her at this point. We had staffing issues of our own and we're not able to take <coughs> any additional projects this moment. My understanding from the conversation was she had HUD funding in place to do it herself, but needed us to say, no, we can't do it. So, so yes, I did send an email perfect. saying no. Perfect. So yes. Yes. Yeah. I apologize. I thought I copied you on that. Okay. I'm involved with the health department. Right? Yes. Just, just so everybody answered that. Yeah. I think it's good things I want to do. Yeah. They've already done some work in there that's made a difference. Well, long ways to go, but don't start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. What do you say? Fun to get on the right track. Oh. Okay. Uh, do we have anything for executive? Yes. You yep, can. Okay. All right. So I will make motion that we enter the regular select board meeting and or exit the regular <laughs> select board meeting and enter into executive with uh, Michelle and Wendy. A second. Aye. Aye. All right. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.